Let's take a look at evaluating formulas and solving formulas for a variable. Specifically, the part we're going to focus on is solving a formula for a variable. So, solving a formula for a variable. Now, our first step is to get rid of parentheses. And we do this via the distributive property. Our second step is get rid of fractions. Excuse me. We multiply everything by the LCM of all the denominators. Step three get everything. with the variable we're solving for four on one side everything else on the other side Step four, if the variable we are solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. Strictly speaking, they don't have to be terms, but we'll go with that. Most of the time they are. And our fifth step, divide both sides by what is in front of slash back of the variable we're solving for. Now these five steps will solve any formula uh, formula problems. Um, these actually a little bit more than what you'd need for this particular course. These are the same steps I put up in elementary al algebra, intermediate algebra, and college algebra. Um, so some of these we'll never use, but I wanted to go ahead and give them to you now. Let's take a look at this first problem. Got A is equal to BC, and we're solving for B. Okay. First step, get rid of parentheses. Don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Third step, get everything with a variable we're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. Most of the times we're talking about terms there, but sometimes not. Um, so get everything with a variable we're solving for. Everything with a B is on the right side, and everything else is over on the other side. So that's done. Step four, the variable we're solving for is in two or more terms. Factor it out. It's only one term. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. Then step five, divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable we're solving for. We're solving for B. There's nothing in front of it. There's a C after it. So we'll divide both sides by C. We'll do that. Those C's going to cancel. 
And we got B is equal to A over C. And that's our answer. Let's look at our second problem. We got W is equal to A E C D. And I want to solve it for E. Well, first step get rid of any parentheses. Um, don't have any. Um, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Third step, get everything with an E on one side, everything else on the other side. Well, everything with an E is on the right side, and everything else is on the other side. Step four, if the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. It's only one term. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. And last step, divide both sides by what's in front of, slash back of, the variable you're solving for. We're solving for E, there's an A in front of it and there's a CD after it. So we're going to divide both sides by ACD. Now when we do that, this A cancels that, this C cancels that, and this D cancels with that. And we got E is equal to W over ACD. And that's our answer. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at our next example. We got C is equal to one fifth AB, and we're solving it for B. Well, our first step: get rid of parentheses. Don't have any. Second step: get rid of fractions. Uh, we do have a fraction this time. And we give our fractions by multiplying everything by the LCM of all our denominators. We only have one denominator, the 5, so that's what we'll multiply both sides by. When I say everything, I'm talking about what's separated by pluses, minuses, and equals. Now over here, these 5 is going to cancel, like that. And we got 5C is equal to AB. Um, third step. We're just going through these steps here. Get everything with the variable we're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. We're solving for B, so everything with the B is on the right side and everything else is on the other side. Step four, if the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. It's only in one term on the right side. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses. And last step, divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable you're solving for. There's an A in front of it, so we'll divide both sides by A. I'm going to do that. These A's are going to cancel. And we got B is equal to 5C over A. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's look at our next problem. G is equal to 5A plus 2B minus 3c and we're solving for b. Well our first step is get rid of parentheses don't have any. Second step is get rid of fractions don't have any. Uh, third step is get everything with the variable we're solving for on one side everything else on the other side. Well we're solving for b as in bill so I'm going to take the 5a and move it to the left side and I'll take the negative 3c and move it to the left side. So that gives us G minus 5A plus 3C equals 2B. Now step four. If the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. It's only in one term here. Um, step five. Divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable you're solving for. There's a two in front of the B, so we'll divide both sides by two. And we do that, these twos cancel. And we've got B is equal to G minus 5A plus 3C over 2. And that's our answer. Now these are formulas I've made up, um, but these are the same steps you use on any formula you'll run across. 
If you're going into general chemistry, these steps here will solve any problem you'll run across in that, that class. It'll start failing pretty fast in Chem 1. But you'll learn other techniques. Okay. Uh, so we're solving this one for little e. Uh, first step, get rid of parentheses. We have parentheses in this one, and we use the distributive property. So this th 3c in front of the parentheses indicates multiplication. So we're going to take 3c times d and times e. Now when you're multiplying together um, different, different letters, different variables, it's real easy. You just put them next to each other, alphabetical order. So 3c times d gives us 3cd. 3c times e gives us 3ce. Now second step, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Uh, third step, get everything with an e on one side, everything else on the other side. So I'll take the 3cd over to the left side. You take anything cross or equals, the sign changes, so it becomes a negative 3cd. Now step four, if the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. It's only in one term, terms separated by pluses and minuses. Last step, divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable you're solving for. There's nothing behind it, but there's a 3c in front of it. So we're going to divide both sides by 3c. Over here, these threes cancel, C's cancel. Then we got E is equal to A minus 3CD over 3C. Now, this is kind of a frustrating section for some people. Oh, by the way, before I go on, um, these three C's you see here that look so tempting to cross those out, you can't do that because this is a minus here. Everything would have to be multiplication up on top for you to cancel that out. Like over here, when I canceled out these three C's, this was 3 times C times E. That's why we could cross out the 3 and the C. Since we have a minus here, we can't do that. Now, this will be a frustrating section for some people, because you'll work the problem down. We did all our steps correct, and we got uh, this answer. Look in the back of the book, and it doesn't match. Um, if uh, you work it a different way, using some shortcuts, and I tend to ignore shortcuts. I go with those five steps that work 100% of the time. But if you were to go with some shortcuts on this one, first thing we could do to begin with is divide both sides by 3C. And get that. And then we take that D over to the left side and becomes a negative D. And we get this as our answer. And you look at that and it's like, well, I didn't look anything like this. Um, unfortunately, that's the way formulas work. Um, depending upon which steps you take, which um, direction you take things and so forth, your answer will look different. So don't panic. If you felt good about all your steps, you probably did it right. Um, it's just, that's the nature of the, the beast. Well, I think I got this, um, pretty sure I got this saved. So, um, let me look at the next example. <coughs> Now those first ones were ones you'd run across um, if you were going on like general chemistry, general physics type of type classes with different letters, and the letters mean something there. These last two are the type you'd run you run across in algebra. We got this one. I want to solve for y. Well, um, one of the purposes we'd solve for y is it makes it very easy to graph, whether we're doing it by hand or whether we're using a calculator. Um, so this is a common thing to do. We still use those same steps, um, so we'll go through them. First step, get rid of parentheses. Don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Don't have any. Third step, get everything with the variable we're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. Now I'm going to take the negative 5y to the right side. Now I'll take 25 to the left side. Remember, when you take anything cross or equals, your sign changes. So the positive 25 becomes a negative 25. The negative 5y becomes a positive 5y. Well, step four, if the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. Terms are separated by pluses and minuses, so the y is only in one term. The last step, divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable you're solving for. Well, there's a five in front of it. Now, specifically, what they'll do is they'll divide 
the 15x by 5, the negative 25 by 5, and then the 5y by 5. Those cancel. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So we've got 3x minus 25 divided by 5 is 5. And we've got y is equal to 3x minus 5. They'll do this for a specific reason. Uh, this is called slope-intercept form, which we'll see later on. And let's take a look at the last example. We've got 2 fifths x minus 7 thirds y equals negative 2. Well, first step, get rid of parentheses. Don't have any. Second step, get rid of fractions. Uh, we do have fractions. Multiply everything by the LCM of all your denominators. Well, 5 and 3, my LCM would be 15. So we'll multiply everything by 15. Multiply times our first fraction times our second fraction, and times the number on the right side. Now notice this negative 7 thirds y, I went ahead and put the negative out in front. The negative 2, I left the two negative, negative inside. It does not matter where you put it, just as long as you don't lose track of it. Well, 5 and 15 are both divisible by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 3 and 15 are both divisible by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. Now, if all of your denominators have disappeared and you got ones down there, that means you picked the right LCM, or you at least picked a common multiple. 3 times 2 is 6, so we got 6x, minus 5 times 7 is 35 with a y, and 15 times negative 2 is negative 30. Third step, get everything with the variable you're solving for on one side, everything else on the other side. We're yet again solving for y. So we're going to get everything with y on one side, everything else on the other side. I'll take the negative 35y to the right side and the negative 30 to the left side. The only reason I'm choosing that direction is it'll make the number that's in front of our y positive. You don't have to do that. You could take the 6x to the right side and then divide everything by negative 35. By the way, I chose this way. Take negative 30 to the left side, becomes a positive 30. Take negative 35y to the right side and becomes a positive 35y. When you take anything cross or equals, the sign changes. Now, if the variable you're solving for is in two or more terms, factor it out. This is only one term. Last step, divide both sides by what's in front of slash back of the variable you're solving for. Solving for y, and there's a 35 in front of it. So we'll divide the 6x by 35. We'll divide the 30 by 35. And the 35y by 35. And that was going to cancel. So we got 6 35ths x. And 30 and 35 are both divisible by 5. Uh, so that gives us 6 sevenths. And that would be our answer. And uh, it's actually the end of that section, too.